Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger, my friends. This is your starter guide for Jack 8 in Tekken 8. So Jack's a very big boy, but you might have some misconceptions about him out of the gate. Yes, he's very large, along with the bears. He is the biggest character in the game. However, he isn't necessarily your typical big boy fighting game character because his strengths don't necessarily lie in gigantic, like overwhelming attacks. He has a couple really good ones, don't get me wrong, but where Jack is in the end is a super solid fundamentals poking character. His poke game with basic pokes is among the best in the game and he really excels at it and excels at chipping you down with sort of low level mix. And by that, I mean basically mixing you up with highs, mids and lows, but just singular poke form, not so much the big 50-50 into losing half your life. Now he may defy your expectations in one way and not so much in the other or when it comes to just the nature of the game. In strictly 2D terms, in terms of movement, Jack is actually a fast character. Even his basic backdash, is faster than some other people's like backdash canceling, like Korean backdashing, right? So he can move forward and backwards very good. Uh, the thing, 3D game being 3D, he is very wide, what with his gigantic torso and everything, right? So while he can certainly sidestep certain moves, it's a bit more difficult for him. He will be hit by uh, certain moves sidestepping that other characters just simply will not. So keep that in mind. Now, being a big character, yes, he does have a lot of advantage frames on block. And also, he has a new stance where he literally flexes on you. And this is one of the best additions to the character by a lot. Uh, we'll have multiple sections about the stance because both uh, defensively it's powerful and offensively, well, it's got a thing or two to work with. So yeah, Jack, in the end, big boy, carries a lot of the big boy strengths in that he has a lot of advantage, a lot of very, very, very long range moves. He can kind of cover the screen in a way a lot of characters simply cannot. But then again, being big, he's a little easier to hit in certain scenarios that other characters can more easily escape. Now, to kind of head into our next section here, Tekken move lists, they're always very big. And you know what? You don't need to necessarily know every move. Sure, when you're a pro, go for it, right? But for now, let's focus on 10 essential moves for you to know. So the first of our 10 moves that you really need to know about Jack is not going to blow you away. It really isn't. Just down back one. This is the Machine Gun Blast. I know this doesn't look like much, but Jack is a poke-based character, and let me tell you, this is the poke. The, capital T-H-E, poke. Because I believe this is the single fastest slow in the game from the standing position. It is 12 frames. Uh, suffice to say, most other lows, even generic lows, are much slower than this. If you are not already blocking low, you're going to get hit. End of story, simple as that. And it gives you a single frame advantage, like literally plus one, which is great because it leaves you in crouching and Jack is amazing from crouch. It's going to get its own section later in the video. Uh, bare minimum, you can do it and you can hit like a wall standing four. And if they dare hit a button, they're going to get smacked. Uh, and if for whatever very rare reason it would trade, trust me, the trade's going to be in your favor. But while you're here and you got that one plus frame, and they're scared to do anything because of that wall standing four. Then you can start getting really interesting. You can start doing a lot of things from Crouch. You can start bullying people or you can just go for more and more and more. And he has so many good lows, like lows we're not going to talk about in this section necessarily. Uh, you know, like down back two is really good. Uh, counter hits uh, into a combo also leaves him crouching, but it's also slower. Uh, down back one plus two has almost 30 damage on hit. Both are lows. However, uh, it's negative 70 on block. <laughs> so, you know, uh, down back one, a little more generous at negative 12. You might eat a wall standing four, that's it. But yeah, as a poke based character, you will threaten the people with this all day long. You will just chip away at them and there's very little people can do about it other than just a lucky guess. This is really good. Also, it does have multiple follow-ups here, as you can see here. So you can chain up to three times and go down back one, 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 two. And if the enemy's at the wall, down back one, one is a natural combo, by the way. So if you're just looking to get some extra damage in uh, from normally uh, just, you know, anywhere else on the screen, it pushes back too far. But near the wall, they'll get a free extra hit in. So, yeah, I know it's not cool. I know it's not sexy, but trust me, this is the stuff empires are built on. This is like the move for Jack. 
Now, next up, keeping on that poke train, this regular old stand two. Just a basic jab. Now, the thing about him and his basic jabs is his are actually slower than just about everyone else in the game. Uh, his stand one is 12 frames compared to most people's 10, and his stand one is 11 frames. But his stand two specifically has like three times the range of everyone else's stand two in the game. So then it becomes, well, like I said about poking, it becomes a big old poke, right? And it's very advantage on hit and still plus on block. So rest assured, hit, or as long as it connects in any way, shape, or form, it is effectively now your turn. Now from there, do what you want. Do you want to do more? Sure. You want to sneak in a quick poke? Sure. You want to go for like a tick throw setup? Sure, go for it. Whatever you want to do, uh, it behooves you to keep going. Also, many strings come from this. So there is 2-1. So 2-1 is high mid. So if they duck the initial high, they're almost certainly going to get hit by the mid. And also the mid connecting leaves you at plus two frames as well. Even has some canned follow-ups here. So 2-1, 1 plus 2 is a completely safe on block, just kind of chain gun follow-up. Kind of resets the spacing. And trust me, even though it's a little negative, resetting the spacing is uh, to your advantage. Or 2-1-2. Two, two. If they're expecting that follow-up and they try to duck it, this is a mid. And we'll bop them. And also... We'll launch them as well, and you will get a combo out of this. Also, if you're looking for quick guaranteed damage in a situation where you happen to be plus 11, of which Jack can force, as we'll talk about later in the video, 2-3 as well. So 2-3 is just a quick 28 damage. Now, it's not safe on block. So once again, save this for situations where damage is guaranteed. But if you need quick guaranteed damage, it's not a bad source of it. But yeah, in the end, just amazing poke. Very solid. Once again, on hit or on block, it's your turn. And from there, you can keep poking away or enforce whatever mix-up you want to enforce. Uh, the range of the move is very large for what it is. Use and abuse. Once again, this is a poking-based character, and this is one of the pokes you want to use. Now, going with our next move, we're going to get to more exciting moves, don't worry, but we got to keep the basics in mind, because Jack is a fundamentals character in the end. So, just down forward two. That's kind of like your generic launcher, right? And much the same, you know, like a lot of the cast, you get your generic launcher, cool. It's combo time and just kind of go from there and you'll get whatever damage you get. The thing about Jack's that's special and warrants inclusion on this list is just like so many other things, the range. He's got very long arms and you know, from a lot of the casts, like if they do their generic down four two from the round start position, they'll just like barely hit. Now Jack can be a lot further away and still connect with his generic down four two. So in positions, once again, with like his exceptional backdash and all that kind of stuff, in positions where the enemy whiffs even a little bit, just on reaction, if anything whiffs, boom, just go for it. Don't think twice. Because you'll catch limbs, you'll catch arms, legs, whatever. You'll catch a lot of things that other characters simply cannot hit with their generic launcher. Jack absolutely can. So it's a little generic, sure. But as a generic tool, it's one of the best generic tools in the game. Because he simply has like double the range the rest of the cast has. Now, next is an important building block of the character, and once again, keeping with the poke theme, 4 forward 1, the Jackhammer. So, the Jackhammer. Look at the distance between the two characters here, right? The Jackhammer's got the range, is what I'm trying to tell you. It is a 15-frame startup, so uh, considering it can hit from, you know, roughly this far away, 15 frames is actually amazing, and hits mid. So, no ducking shenanigans or anything like that. And as a base hit, it's fine. Leaves you at plus eight in their face if uh, they connect. And once again, you got a lot of great pokes. And you can kind of just do whatever off those advantage frames. You know, enforce your mix, enforce your pressure. And if it happens to say get blocked, it creates an intense amount of pushback. You're negative six, as you can see here by the numbers, right? Negative six. But at this distance with that pushback, negative six is a suggestion. It doesn't actually matter in the real world. You can kind of just do whatever you want. So what I'm trying to tell you is it's very negligible if it happens to be blocked. And if it's hitting, great, all reward. And speaking of all reward, on counter hit, it just splats the enemy down to the ground. And from here, you get things like, say, down back one, two, completely guaranteed. And completely guaranteed here, add the damage. Okay, the base hit is 26 with the counter hit, plus uh, another 20 damage, 46 damage off of a 15 frame half screen counter hit. Sounds good to me. Also you can cancel into his new stance. Now on hit, canceling into the stance is kind of like a zero sum, but on block, if the enemy blocks a move and you go into stance, you're now advantage frames. 
Now, the stance, a lot of the stance moves are slower, as we'll get into. But if you just want to mix it up every now and then you do the move, every now and then you do the move and go to the stance, you can keep the opponent guessing. And also, just like before, on counter hit, if you do go into stance, you still get a little free guaranteed damage. So that is very helpful. So workhorse of a move, only thing is don't get too predictable with it out of range, as it's an incredibly linear move. And therefore, if they see it coming, they'll step it. But you know what? He's got things to catch people from range with a step, right? Like four forward, one plus two, regular one plus two. So you got options, but just don't get too abusable with it. Now here's another fun move, forward two. So Jack having slower moves, cause he's a big boy. Forward two is an actual 10 framer. So, you know, most people stand one, stand two, they're 10 framers. Jack, it's forward two. Now, unlike most people's, his is punishable on block, right? It's negative 12 on block. So what's the deal here? Well, one, you're taking some element of risk if you want to fast attack. That's just sort of the nature of the character, right? But also on counter hit, this is like your big time panic button. Because on counter hit, it just completely splats the enemy down to the ground. And beauty here is specifically, you get guaranteed damage off that. So you can just go for four, four, four. And if you get that counter hit forward two, boom, 50 plus damage, easy peasy, right? So when you're panicking, you don't know what to do and like the enemy's pressure, you might as well go for your fastest attack, right? And specifically for him coded, his fast attack is a big time bonus on counter hit. So when you're panicking, hit forward two, and you know what? You might hit, which is great, but you might counter hit, which is even better and get gigantic reward. It's just simply a really good panic move, really good at what it's designed to do. And in situations where you need a 10 frame punish, well, this is your 10 frame move. So there you go. Another very important move for Jack is sidestep two. So even though he's not great at evasiveness, he'll generally sidestep anyways, just to create, you know, advantageous situations as far as like the angles of the stage go. And the move itself is fairly quick. It's a high, so it is duckable, but it's a monstrous plus nine on block and also does an incredible amount of chip damage while having an incredible amount of range, as you can see here. Like, you don't expect most moves to hit from this far? Jack says, no, nah, we're good. We're gonna hit from that far away. So when people think they're out of range, you're never out of range when it comes to Jack. And the beauty is, so plus on block, good. Chip damage, good. What if it hits? And if it hits, Splat City. And just like we talked about a moment ago, forward two and that forward two counter hit, this doesn't need a counter hit. It just triggers automatically if it connects. And if it connects, forward, 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 the big boot, you get that bad boy. And you get that pretty respectful damage off such a long range poke for what it is, right? So when you're doing the whole trying to outspace each other, keep in mind, you got some good stuff. Also, he has more. He does have sidestep one. It's obviously a good deal slower as a launcher. 30 plus frames, but this bad boy is also advantage on block. It is plus six, but if they're just ducking in situations where say they're expecting this high, you can just go for this instead. And then, hey, collect your free launcher, I guess, and just kind of go from there. Whatever you want to do, the damage will work itself out, right? So sidestep attacks for Jack, pretty powerful. Another important button is down forward one. This guy right here, just kind of a quick, punch to the gut. So it's 14 frames as a mid is a little slower by the cast standards. And hey, it's kind of a running theme, right? He's got slower buttons. Like he does have back four, but this is negative on hit, <laughs> let alone on block, right? So it's not the best check. Uh, so this guy here, uh, plus three on hit. And if it's blocked, it's only negative four, so it's fine. So the beauty about down forward one, top of just being a good mid check and with a very respectable range, as you can see, once again, kind of a theme with Jack, right? Long range pokes is uh, you can kind of pressure and follow up after with some staggerable pressure. If they want to take their turn right after they block this, or even if you hit, right? They can be in the, for a world of hurt. Uh, you have down forward one, one, which comes in a little slower. It's slightly punishable on block. It's not a natural combo necessarily, right? Uh, will combo and counter hit though. But if they try to hit buttons, even a quick 10 frame button, they're gonna lose. And if the second hit by itself connects as a counter hit, then it becomes a launcher. And then you can kind of get whatever you want off that, right? I uh, can just boot them. You can kind of get more elaborate combos going on, like whatever you want to do. So it behooves them not to mash in this situation. Also, you have the uh, two one follow up. So there is a more elaborate string here. So this is down forward one, two, one. This guy right here, two punches. And kind of the same deal if they hit buttons. 
and you can see here it launches right but this also launches naturally it doesn't even need a counter hit now you're not necessarily gonna get like tons of damage off this particular string like the starter is not great it doesn't leave you in a great position for your most optimal juggles but damage is still damage right so just the base down forward one very strong poke mid hitting keeps people honest and the threat of the follow-up specifically will keep people very honest because uh counter hit one way regular hit the other way combo time now another kind of basic move and once again i, I don't want to bum you guys out like not showing you all the cool moves but jack's just a super fundamental pokey based character right and like you need the core fundamental moves for this guy to win so run one plus two the big shoulder this is just a solid workhorse move one it does a hell of a lot of damage just 34 damage two if you're anywhere near a wall you better believe it's a splat and a lot of guaranteed damage after the fact it does a lot a lot of chip damage and it's advantage on block what's not to love now it's not necessarily a best in class run attack like uh, our pal azucena here definitely better but you know not every attack has to be the best in the game to work right and with Jack, you know, playing neutral, you're going to have a lot of plus frames anyways. Uh, whenever people are scared to take their turn, you know what? Say, no, I'm going to take another turn. Deal some guaranteed chip. Get more advanced frames, kind of work from there. And if they're getting up or if you have any kind of advantage on them, it, once again, it's a mid. There's no evading this. Uh, a lot of combos will leave people, if it's not already on the wall, leave them knocked down with you with a lot of advantage. So it's good just kind of run up on them, right? It's just very solid workhorse dependable move. Now we're going back to the basic pokes again here, but this is the foundation in which Jack's kingdom is built. So full crouch. So we have to be in crouch already and then hit down back one. And it's just a quick little slap to the legs. And why is this good? One, uh, fairly fast for what it is, 14 frames. And the range is incredible on this. Like it is just a quick sniper move. And also it is negative 11. And from the range it hits at, and the fact that there's a bit of pushback, it can be truly unpunishable on block, even if they know it's coming. Because the general punish for 11 frame low is while standing four. And a lot of the characters at max range simply do not have the range to touch it. So you can actually go low with impunity. Like they have to low parry if they want anything of consequence on this. So keep that in mind with like a lot of the other lows we've already talked about, right? Is quick low poke game is just absolutely savage. Not the least of which, being in the uh, full crouch stance, uh, it just gives you a lot more to go with, a lot to threaten the enemy. Did I get it? Cool. It has a mid follow-up. So I can go low then mid really quick. Or I can just go low and then just do it again, right? So two lows, or is it gonna be low and mid? Hope you guessed right. And also the low mid has a third follow-up, another mid, which is chargeable. And if you get hit by the full charge version, It'll do chip damage, technically negative, but with so much pushback, it doesn't really matter. It's just really good. Another just massive workhorse move. So once again, we get that down back one, the first building block, and we're already in crouching. Okay. Do we go for another low? Do we go for some mids? Like, what are we doing here? Yeah, world is your oyster. So Jack is a character that's foundationally built on the pokes, and this is a hell of a poke. Full crouch, down back one. It just really complements this game very, very well. Okay, now we've done a lot of pokes, so let's end off this section with something big and stupid. So up back one plus two. This move is fantastic. So it is a power crush move, which means it's armored against mids and highs. That's really good. It has a singular big hit. It's all right, like does 30 damage, not nothing. Also sends people effing flying. If you happen to be mildly near the corner, you better believe that's a splat. Now, depending on the angles, it might throw them out of the corner, right? It'll always kind of knock them into the screen, if you will. It'll always send them flying to Jack's right. But besides that, as long as you're roughly near the wall, you'll splat them. And the closer you are, uh, you might get that big boy hit. And if you happen to get that big boy hit, game over is basically what we got to say about that. Uh, 70 plus damage. So armored, full circle tracking, no sidestepping Jack on this bad boy good against the wall also for an armored move it's completely safe on block there is not many power crush moves that are safe on block in this game some have a small punish some have bigger punishes jack at negative nine is completely safe on block yes you lost your turn sure but considering the general uh 
matrix of rewards you get out of this as a pressure tool, as a defensive tool, as like an anti sidestepping tool, and as like just everything. Man, and on safe on block on top of that, like it's a hell of a move. Now, Jack has other good sources of armor, as we'll get into. But if you're ever feeling, you know, you're a little bit of pressure, your backs to the ball, or maybe their backs to the wall too, right? It's just a really good move just to smack people around with. Now, let's talk Jack's stance. Three plus four, the Gamma Howl. And he's literally, very literally flexing on you. So we're going to do two sections here. One, this one, talking about the defensive aspects of it. And also the second one, talking about the offensive, because it has a whole bunch of moves attached to it. But now, let's just talk defense. I know it's not as cool, but it's important, trust me. So notice the flash when he does it, right? So this has power crush properties. So that means he can armor through stuff. So he has other moves with armor, like uh, the up back one plus two, which we talked about in the top 10 move section, right? But the thing is the stance armor's better than that armor. So how is Gamma Howl better than the regular traditional power crush? Well, one, even though it doesn't explicitly state it, it does kind of low profile at the startup, which is very handy versus the other power crush is uh, not so much. So it actually has an invasive property kind of built into it at the very start, which is nice. Now, secondly, obviously enough, when you power crush a move, you take some chip damage, right? Uh, so notice the amount of damage we take here. Now notice the amount of damage the stance takes. Stance armor takes half as much chip as any other power crush armor source. So you're literally just better off defensively. Not the least of which you may notice he's making a little bit of an animation, right? That actually does matter because it actually turbocharges some of your moves. And those turbocharges can lead to very guaranteed combo damage. This is no joke. Importantly for the armor, the armor goes live faster than your fastest possible move. So say Azucena is just kind of going to bully us around here, right? So after the boot, we're negative, and then she goes for a move that's faster than anything we can do 10 frame wise. Like we can try to hit forward too, that's our fastest move, but it's not going to work and we're just going to get beat. The armor though, even after we get hit, the armor will still go live because it goes live faster than 10 frames, which is what our fastest moves go live in. So if we know we're going to get bullied here, fine, great, guaranteed punish for me. Because I can just kind of tank through all that stuff. I can't hit my fastest buttons because it's too tight. But I can still armor through it and get a punish on the other end. It's not airtight. I believe it starts on frame 7. So if you have any kind of gap of 7 frames or better, you're able to just kind of armor your way through it. And say in panic situations where you know something's coming, but you don't believe yourself to be fast enough to stop it. Like say Azucena's run 3-2. You have a rough idea it's coming, just armor through it. As long as you're roughly on the ball, it will work out and you can kind of just go from there. Now, any combo off of this, like uh, say stance one or stance forward plus one, it already uses up your tornado. So you're not going to get the biggest punish, but you will get more damage in than your generic power crush scenario. And obviously a lot more screen carry as well, right? So play around with it. Uh, it can get guaranteed punishes off many things where you kind of just had to sit and wait or otherwise wait your turn. The armor goes live faster than your fastest attacks. And if you do successfully armor through something, it'll enhance that state where you see him kind of flex and power up. And from there, you get some pretty big boy things. So now let's talk offense for the stance. Many moves transition into the stance, forward three kind of being the most important of which, where you just hit forward three and then hit down to go into the stance. Many moves, if you stance cancel, you're gonna be advantage on block. And the very few that aren't advantage on block, like say forward three plus four, uh, it's not because you get a guaranteed grounded combo. Uh, you can guaranteed low throw someone if it hits into stance cancel. So that's why that one's negative on block. You get a lot of fun moves from the stance. Most importantly is stance one and stance two. Stance one is a full circle mid. That means no sidestepping, no ducking. Now, of these moves, it's one of the rare ones that's punishable. It's negative 10 point blank, so they'll get like a quick jab combo on you or something. This is to dissuade you from all the other options. Start doing this one if they start avoiding everything else. Because we got the money maker, like say, stance two. So stance two on its own is just a big F off right fist, right? No subtlety, 
Like we talk a lot about Jack and pokes and all that kind of stuff. No, this is the, this is not poking people. This is just crushing people. It is a high, yes. It is also plus 11 on block, 11. That's a lot to be plus by. Uh, not many moves can approach anything close to that. So uh, suffice it to say, if it's blocked, it is still very much your turn. Now, the thing about these two specifically, that power up, these are the two moves that get powered up if you flex a move, both the one and the two. One becomes safe on block now. So it's negative six now instead of negative 10 like it was before. Two becomes a guard break, which means now with that plus 11 frames, the guard break means you actually get legitimately guaranteed damage. Like two, three, now guaranteed. Because it's guaranteed damage, it does scale a little bit just to keep things fair, right? But guaranteed damage is guaranteed damage. They lost for blocking. By blocking, they made the wrong move, which is usually not how it is in fighting games, but Jack is a character that can enforce this. And if it connects, one just becomes a straight up launcher. So normally it's just a basic hit. But if you have the charge up, this full on launch and call win the combo as we showed earlier, a guaranteed punish in many situations where you would flex on somebody. Not every situation, if it's just a quick poke, you armored through nothing else, they'll still have a chance to block, but then it's safe on block, so whatever. And two, just comes a giant F off hit, right? It does more damage. So like, it's not exactly a subtle move. You just get more damage if it goes. So those two moves specifically are powered up if you stance parry a move. Now we still got a lot more to go. Stance three is a big old stomp. It's uh, basically it's forward forward three, but in the stance, big old stomping mid. If it connects, great. If it's a counter hit, stomped, guaranteed follow up damage. If it's blocked, plus four on block, great. You're kind of always winning here. Stance four, it's the boot. This is like one of the moves. So it's a heat engager in and of itself. Always handy. It is 14 frames and plus on block, so it's fast. Uh, not many of the moves out of the stance are terribly fast, uh, but it is fast for the stance and it's plus on block and does chip damage. So a lot to love here. And generally speaking, the threat of this move specifically is why someone would try to duck or try to sidestep, which is why you'll bust out stance one every now and then. Of the moves, generally speaking, this is the most important one. This is the moneymaker move. Because other than the fact it's a high, it is all upside and all advantage. It's fast, it's chip damage, it's plus frames, it's knocked down on a hit, it's a heat engager if it hits raw. What's not to love? But we got more. We have stance forward one. So this is effectively the same move as like his wind up punch, where you go into this. Although you cannot do the blue spark fast version out of the move. So the extra bonus damage, no dice. You just get the base damage. Good for combos, causes the tornado state. You'll be using this a lot in your just general combo structure as you can easily shift into stances and combos. Stance forward two, big old drill, deceptively safe on block for some of these moves as it's negative 13, but with a good amount of pushback on block. So unless people are like really ready with their moves, uh, specifically a move that hit from that far away, you can probably get away with it. Cause like a lot of jabs, like they're not reaching, like technically it's fast enough, but like you also have to account for the distance, right? So it has to be 13 frames and also cover this exact distance. And then we have stance three plus four. So this is also a heat engager. As you can see here, he's like sort of like low key going nuclear, right? Just kind of giant electro shock around him. So this move also has armored power crush property. So this move can also armor through stuff. So if you're in a position where Say you're in a stance for whatever reason, you tried to bait something and nothing happened. And then like, you know, they're button happy, they're gonna hit buttons. You're gonna say, nah, and armor through the next thing coming your way. So like all armored moves, you can be thrown, all the kind of stuff. There is some downside to it, but this is a really good panic move. If your stance for whatever reason just didn't get what you needed out of it. So that's stance three plus four, stance one plus two is a throw. So it's always gonna be a one, two break. There's like no gimmick or whatever. It's just kind of catch people sleeping or perhaps catching people trying to armor through your moves or parry your moves or whatever, at which point it'll be a guaranteed move. This is a lone move from Gigas. Uh, you might notice the eye flash there. Many moves with that eye flash 
are basically moves uh, borrowed from Gaius from Tekken 7. So stance one plus two is a big old throw. And also, if it's anywhere near the corner, it's gonna splat them on the wall. And if you hit up back or up forward while you're in the stance, you will basically just do a quick jet escape or jet launch forward. So just a little bit of mobility without having to wait for the move to kind of naturally conclude and then move on your own. So you just need a quick burst of space. It's a good way to do it. Lots of moves lead you into the stance, like forward three, once again, really good one. Back three, two, hold down. Uh, things like up forward three, it's a jumping low that automatically puts you in a stance at very heavy frame advantage on hit. So there's a lot of ways to get in the stance and a lot of your gimmicks and pressure, some real, some fake, some looks fake, but is real, some is real, but looks fake. Like it's a big part of the game. Stance is super important for the character. So play around with it. Defensively and offensively, it's fantastic. Now let's talk Jack in heat mode. Heat mode, very important for every character in the game. Jack, obviously no different than the rest, but what does he specifically get? You may notice his hands are glowing and when he's in heat mode, the bonuses you would get from the stance if you parried something in the stance are just forever live. That means stance one is always a launcher when you're in heat, no matter what, and always safe on block when you're in heat, very good. And that means stance two is the big F off hit if it connects but more importantly, and extra scary in heat mode, that means stance two is always a true guard break if it connects at all when you're in heat mode. And this means things get scary because even the most basic quick stance cancel can lead to a guard break. And then it can be whatever, like they're blocking your jabs. Think fast, whoops, you didn't think fast enough. Haha, <laughs> guaranteed damage, you're dead. Game over, right? So the threat of the omnipresent guard break while you're in heat stance is really good not the least of which because when you're in heat mode, everyone has their heat smash. Jax, his giant rail gun blows you away with it, right? Really cool, really cool. The thing that's not immediately apparent until you look at the numbers though, is that it's 10 frames. It's the fastest in the game, a 10 frame heat smash. So now suffice it to say in those situations where you need the quick 10 frame punish, you can do a little bit better than forward two now, right? Forward two, it does what it does, what you need it to do, because Jack has slow moves, but now, no, take 50 plus, right? Pretty savage. Now, putting two and two together, if I'm in heat mode, and every stance two I do is a guard break, and I have access to the single fastest heat smash in the game, oh. So yeah, it'll scale a bit, because that's how it do. But if you hit someone with stance two in heat, the heat smash is guaranteed if they block. So their reward for correctly blocking your move is eating 36 damage, which bad feeling for them, very good feeling for you. Now, besides that, you got a lot of the basics, like all your normals are gonna do chip, all that kind of stuff, right? That's all well and good, especially cause you know, you can start harassing with some of your better moves, right? And get your chip in. But the big deal is your stance is always the perma buff versions of stance one and two. And you have the fastest heat smash attack in the game. And cause you have the fastest heat smash attack in the game, stance two and heat being the auto guard break means you get auto heat smash punish. So yeah, it's pretty all right is what I'm trying to say. Jack is a bulldozer when he's in heat mode. Cause if you are just passive and block too much, you will pay the price. You cannot afford to just hold back and block against Jack in heat mode. Now let's talk Jack and Crouch. Jack from Crouch has one of the best move sets in the game, both with while standing moves, like while rising moves while you're getting up from the crouch and moves while you're in the crouch already. And the thing is, one of your most basic building blocks, down back one, once again here, such an important tool, will put you in crouch kind of automatically. And that's kind of the party starter here. So while you're in crouching, you get access to one of your best pokes, down back one. And we talked about it earlier in the video. It's very good for a lot of reasons. You get down, hold down, one, one, double low. And this is gonna be a theme because you're gonna get a lot of mix. Down one, two while you're crouching is low mid. You get down forward one, two, one, which crumples the enemy and it's all a natural combo. So if they're blocking too many of these lows here and they're worried about the low parade, 
it's a good way to die pretty quick is what I'm trying to tell you here, because die you will if you didn't block mid, right? Okay, so we got low, mids. We got mid mids. Do we got mid lows? You better believe it. So full crouch, down forward two, down one. That is mid low. So low low, low mid, mid low, and mid mids. And from full crouch down forward two, we can do a lot of things. So full crouch down forward two one is a natural hitting mid mid combo. And also from here, we have down forward two forward one, which is a high that sends people flying. So if they're worried about you know, a low near a wall. This splats them on the wall. And I think you've been picking up what we've been putting down here for the last little bit here, right? Like, you're going to get that damage in. And like, okay, we got all these little low pokes here. What if we need a power low? So while you're crouching, down one plus two is the big old jack double arm sweep, which has a natural combo follow-up. So 37 damage. That's a lot, right? So if you didn't block low, almost 40 damage. So power lows, we got you, right? So we got power lows for big damage. We got combo starters with mids. We got all sorts of mid lows, low lows, mid mids, mid lows. Basically, what I'm trying to say is it's not mostly high scale damage, but Jack can blend you very well from the crouching position. And once again, down back one puts you in crouching automatically. And from there, that's kind of the big party starter. Now let's talk throws. Jack has an above average throw game. It's not as good as King. No one's as good as King. King's the king of the throws, right? But he's uh, very serviceable. So one, he utilizes all three throw breaks. The most important ones for a one break, quarter circle forward one. This is kind of like the least important throw, but it's just there because it's a one break and keeps like the mix going, right? So 40 damage. That's all right, it's serviceable. Next up, he has multiple two breaks, but this is kind of the easy go-to one. Quarter circle back two. So it's a big old backbreaker, and the beauty of this, it already does 45, but it does more damage, but it guarantees down back one plus two. There's no escape. So it's actually 65 damage, because there's no way out of that guaranteed down back one plus two after the fact. And there's down back forward one plus two, which is another kind of pile driver, and this does 50 damage. So you got all three breaks accounted for, one, two, and one plus two. So that works, and there's a lot of other throws, yes, but those are the core ones that will generally matter the most. Now, fun bonus, the one break is a groundbreaker. So for the stages that matter, like say this or the asteroid, that matters. And the other pile driver, down, back, forward, one plus two, also much the same. So for when it matters, you're gonna get the damage. Let's put it that way, right? You're gonna do all right by yourself. Don't worry about that. Now, another thing about throws for Jack specifically, this is a good thing and a bad thing. Because Jack's arms are so much bigger than everyone else's. Trying to determine if it's a one break or a two break or a one plus two break, his arms are a lot bigger. It's just literally that much easier to visually see which break is going to be which because his arms are just so much more in the way. So that can work against him. But since his arms are a lot bigger, he can grab you from further away than everyone else. So that's really handy. Like from far range, we talked about so much how, you know, the pokes are good, right? Just a basic stand too, from very far range, when people are not expecting it, you could go for like poke, backbreaker. Oh, did you not guess? Did you not think that was gonna happen? And then deal some big time damage, right? So it's easier to tell when he's going for the grabs, but it's also easier for him to grab people just to the sheer length of his arms. Also the note about Jack, uh, specifically when his back's to the wall. If you go for the generic two plus four grab, right? None of the fancy grabs. If you get it, hey, great, whatever. But if it gets teched, then you switch sides. So you're a little negative, sure, but you went for your basic grab, but they tech, now their back's to the wall. So that's very handy. Go for that one specifically, because the one plus three grab does the same, but it leaves you back turned, which is much worse. You don't want to do that. And if you do happen to be near a wall, the up forward one plus two, down forward two throw becomes a lot more useful because it'll splat them against the wall. So if you happen to be near the wall and you splat them against the wall, then uh, like so many other wall scenarios for Jack, potentially a game over situation, 85 damage, right? So generally the pile driver, the one plus two breaks better there, but this one plus two break is better specifically against the wall. All right, now let's talk Jack and combos. So I'm gonna give you some basic combos, some theory behind them, 
and a couple just weird oddities, right? Let's start with your basic generic launcher combo as it's kind of the most important version. I'll give you the basic version and one that does a bit more damage, but is a little bit harder to do. So that's sort of the generic basics. On the stages that have it, not so much this stage, but on the stages that have it, a wall carry is very easy and very good for Jack. So to give you a basic example here, we're just doing most of the basic combo. And at this point here, after the tornado flip, we're already very close to the wall on a standard size stage if we're roughly around the middle. So of which point, just kind of do what you're gonna do and then either hit back one, which will put him up fairly high against the wall, Back three plus two if you're just a little further away. You're still gonna hit him against the wall. As you see there, Jack's got some range. Jack's got some range. And what are we looking for once we get him on the wall? Well, generally there's one of two easy options. They both are sort of the same, just whatever you prefer. However you manage to get him on the wall, that's up to you. And then from there, back three, two is kind of the go-to. And then from that point, back three, two into the shoulder. That's a down forward three plus four. So this is also one of his fastest mids, but when it connects specifically on the wall in this way, it'll have very relaxed scaling. So you get 14 damage, 50% of it. So good way, good chunk of damage for the combo ender. Or much the same here. Once again, back three, two, but we'll go into our stance. And from the stance, we'll do forward two. And forward two will get us just ever so slightly more damage than the other combo. Although the timing's a little bit more strict, it's a little less lenient, depending on where they are on the wall. So use whichever one works for you. That's the general ender. He had a more powerful one involving the blue uppercut, but that got patched out. Now, just for some rapid fire combo situations, some basic, some a bit more advanced. And that is the Jack starter guide. So Jack, at first glance, he might not be exactly the character you think he is, right? Because he's exceptional at poking people and like low level mix-ups, constantly making you guess low and mid a million times over. 
and kind of draining your life through a series of paper cuts, right? He does have the big home run swings every now and then, but you probably think the big guy, that's all he is, and no, he's actually just a super fundamentally sound character that rewards you well just by playing smart fighting game strategy. That said, though, he's a cool big robot dude. You know, everyone likes big robot dude. Does cool big robot dude things every now and then. He's got big laser guns. Uh, in my opinion, has one of the cooler looking rage arts. It's just fluff, it's just flair, but still, it matters, right? I like this kind of stuff, right? But yeah, if you're looking for, you know, the standard big boy character that can do a lot of big boy things, especially now with the addition of the stance, like armoring through stuff as Jack is the most as important as ever been. And he also has like really good basic power crush moves anyways, which really helps. And if you're just looking to beat people the old fashioned way, Jack is kind of low on the gimmicks. Not to say that there isn't any because everyone has them, but uh, he's kind of low on the gimmicks. And when you beat someone with Jack, you kind of beat him the old fashioned way, right? You're frustrated with your uh, mid and low game and you kind of out poked and out neutraled them. So if you're looking for just kind of solid fighting game fundamentals character, especially if you're coming from other fighting games and say Tekken is your first 3D fighter, I think Jack will do very well by you. So if that sounds good, give him a shot. And that said, hope the video helped you out. Hope you had fun watching it. Leave a like if you could, it does help out. And otherwise that is the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some Tekken.